bag. I want the bag. Work my way from a garden to a track. Flip it from a track to a plot full of acres. Do it for the farmers and the producers and the makers. What we even here for? Occasionally I ask it. I know it's more than struggling, anticipating the casket. Reap what we sow, trying to fill up my basket. Life's a plantation, I self-law and master. Over the plot, I've been granted on this planet Now we're slanted, cause the chosen been supplanted But if you overstand it, it was spoken Fractured, but we ain't broken Even though some would rather play the role of token We growing Black through the essence of a presence We carry the blood of gods, we carry the mind of peasants Rich black gardens, future look more like Eden Multiply seeds like the seed banks in Sweden Rep my planners on plan according to season Be one cold Switching it up is treason. Black power, family, what we eat. Either we get fed or we feed. Be one bag. Copyright disclaimer in section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips to balance in favor of fair use. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Welcome back to B1A. I'm John Henry Harris. We also have Farmer Brian EMC. Here at B1A, we focus on black agriculture, agricultural production, education, marketing, health, food, nutrition, and economics, all for the black family and the black community. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, we have another serious topic for you today. Uh, we just recently did a story uh, highlighting how the U.S. government has spent more money and given more money to the Taliban than it has to our black farmers. Uh, today, we're going to double down. Uh, a story came out, uh, CNN where it shows that the Biden administration, they're asking for uh, billions for disaster and refugee funding. Now, they're asking for more than $30 billion, but $6.5 billion uh, will go towards uh, funding Afghan refugees. Now this comes at a time where Americans have lost their unemployment uh, corona, their, their, uh, their unemployment bonus, time where rent moratoriums have ended. And this is also the time where our black farmers are still waiting to receive the $4 billion in just debt relief that was promised to them back in March. So today's topic, what, are, what we're going to talk about today, no help is coming. So what will you do? Farmer Brown, let's jump into it. First, I'd just like to say peace to the B1 family. Hope everybody's uh, doing well considering these strange times we find ourselves in. But I guess to put this conversation into context, and so, you know, over the last few years, and actually since the end of what we call slavery in North America, our ancestors, uh, those before us all the way up to the Panthers, they even now have uh, at the top of our lungs scream for reparative justice in the form of reparations. Uh, so the bill we have now have is H.R. 40. It was introduced by uh, the late Representative John Conyers in 1989. In 1989, I was, what, nine years old. Uh, the 40 re refers to the failed government effort to provide 40 acres of land to newly freed slaves. Uh, I'm making that point to say we find ourselves in 2021, and uh, if we can get a show of hand of how many people have gotten 40 acres or even $40 that you didn't have to sell your soul for uh, from this government that made trillions off of our ancestors. Uh, according to an article, uh, basically the math on reparations, the total cost is $51 trillion and a tripling of the national debt. And this includes what we call uh, African-Americans, the Aboriginal Niji of Turtle Island, uh, as well as what's classified as natives, 51 trillion. And so, you know, I'm, I'm from the old school, so I realized, okay, if you have these debts, you gotta knock things out as they go. And so the concept of bringing in more people that you're giving all of this to instead of addressing, you know, some of your other debts, 
it's counterintuitive. And so the question we have today is what are we willing to do? Because there doesn't seem to be too formidable of an effort to repair uh, what was clearly broken. And so I look forward to getting into this conversation. I'm going to be real with y'all. That's why we, we preach about uh, growing your own food, because it's come to a point where, and it's always been this point, the best thing that you can do is do for self. And, uh, you know, down here in the deep south, we have another saying, you know, sometimes you're just going to, well, you're just going to have to wipe your own ass. You heard me? Because um, it's, it's apparent that the, the government's interest is elsewhere. And it's elsewhere even to the detriment of Americans. Now, here... Um, at B1A, we focus on agriculture, we focus on our black farmers and things like that. But at the end of the day, I mean, this is uh, this, the point of egregiousness is it goes beyond just uh, melanated people. You know, this is against, it's, it's almost against our own country. You know, we have people losing, losing housing, losing food, losing jobs you know, mandates coming down, but they just come up with all these billions of dollars to give to other people. And it just, it's just amazing to me. I don't understand. It's an act of intention. Uh, I, I hate to be the type of person to rain on somebody's parade or piss on somebody's parade. But uh, like I said, we've, you know, these, we've been asking for reparative justice since the 1800s, the late 1800s. This is our great, great, great grandparents. And so it comes a point where it's not an accident that we haven't been repaired. It's not an accident that in the midst of after Vietnam, a lot of our uh, parents, grandparents, uh, uh, grandfathers in particular fought in Vietnam. Uh, melanated men have fought in every single war that this continent has embarked upon since it's been classified as uh, the Corporation of the United States of America. And the, uh, my father, my grandfather on both sides, uh, they weren't rewarded with you know better opportunities, opportunity enhanced their life. They were uh, rewarded with you know heroin addiction, you know new drugs coming in, just like uh, coming in from Vietnam, we have the same dynamic coming on from Afghanistan. They weren't rewarded with opportunities to get better housing like their uh, white counterparts. Uh, I got student debt, you know, uh, Dean's List, but I still got student debt. And so no matter how much my family served, you know, and I know I represent one out of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of melanated people who said, okay, you know, instead of being upset, you know, ask not what uh, your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. At what point do we keep doing for a country that has let us know every single time I'm not doing nothing for y'all Negroes? Uh, it get, it, it, you know, my thing is, you know, uh, at the end of the day, you can only pout and cry so much until you figure out, now, what are you going to do about this situation? Uh, we talk, like you said, we talk about the farmers because what they represent is the production base of what we call melanated, aboriginal, Hebrew, Israel, whatever we want to classify ourselves as. I, I, I don't want to say it's arbitrary to disparage any group, but has the Isra Hebrew Israelites been successful at getting reparations? Has the sovereigns been successful at getting reparations? Uh, for those that went along with the black narrative, have you been successful at getting reparations? Colored, have you been successful at getting reparations? Uh, African American system that was never designed to give you anything. And when we talk about this B1A conversation, everything, every civilization, when we talk about nation building, starts with your ability to feed yourselves. How long are we going to keep asking and waiting for, for this corporation to feed that which keeps the corporation strong? Because you have to have a poor, almost, uh, you have to have a poor, large, disparaged base to make a capitalist structure work. It just it, it works that way. I, I was listening to, I think, Dr. Umar Johnson a couple of days ago. Uh, at one point, white men were this, this disparaged base, the people from Southern Europe. Um, all of the things you see going on in the melanated community, uh, drug abuse, alcoholism, you know, violence, 
So it's not like we were just born into this world doing what we see going on on TV. This was another group. But the corporation decided, no, we're not going to do that to them. But, oh, this this large group of brown people, a lot of them was already here. We'll bring some over from other parts of the world. We'll have them as this base. And so 2020 brought to our attention a lot of these uh, things that we've been kind of, that's kind of been out of many of our purview. Uh, there has been a formidable uh, woke community over the decades. Dr. Phil Ballantyne, uh, Ben Yakinen, uh, Dr. Chancellor Williams. Uh, you know, the list goes on of brothers who's, who's elders who have brought this to our attention, what's going on. But as we see everything coming to a head, you know, this 2021 dynamic, everything is coming to a head as far as now, what have you learned? If I shut your internet off now, how well are you going to survive? You know, what have you, you know, because they say you are what you eat. What have we been consuming? What are we going to produce? What are we going to become from what we've been consuming? Like I said, uh, <laughs> this is a frustrating conversation to have, family, but we have to have it. We have to have it. Uh, I'm not going to say lose religion or denomination. That's, you know, that's the person's right. But we got to focus on what are the things we have in common, regardless of what we claim. We all have to eat. This is why we stress the importance of black farmers. Uh, stories like this, uh, the guy in the White House uh, proposing $6.5 billion from a group over the ocean. I'm very curious to see how quick this is going to go. And I think you have some information on how other forms of help have gone on. Now, according to CNN, it state that one of the officials said the government is expecting is expecting 65,000 Afghan refugees to arrive in the U.S. by the end of September and another 30,000 over the next 12 months. The funding request underscores the sheer demand for resettlement resources in the United States and infrastructure that is decimated under the Trump administration. So by the end of this month, it's, a, it's a, today is September 9th. So they're saying by the end of this month, they're expecting 65,000 Afghan refugees. That's 20,000 more than how many black farmers it is. Uh, we, we throw this word around resettle. What about those who already been here? And just for security concerns. Now, didn't the Taliban over there, didn't they just get like billions of dollars worth of weapons that Americans just left over there? And black farmers can't get tractors. Black farmers can't get equipment to, to grow food, to feed people, feed Americans. And I'm talking about high tech weapons, uh, night vision goggles and smart missiles and uh, body armor and uh, 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 doggone uh, helicopters and all kind of tactical and weaponry. Some of the black farmers just need a couple of them John Deere tractor, Husqvarna's, you know, some storage facilities, you know, access to some good seeds. You don't even need to give most of, most of them any uh, armor. <laughs> you know, they don't need helicopters. You know, give them a couple of them GPS drones to, you know, use some of this ag tech to look over the land, you know, make sure they know what kind of soil composition they work with, uh, access to water sources. And at the end of the day, these farmers are going to feed us. Americans. They're going to feed us. It's, just, it's this very, it's, uh, I know you, you share with me before we, we were talking before we got on and uh, Farmer Brown shared with me this statistic. He said the nationwide state leaders set aside at least $2.6 billion from the CARES Act Coronavirus Relief Fund to prop up struggling renters. But a year later, more than $425 million of that or 16% had made it to the pockets of the tenants nor the landlords, according to an investigation by the Center for Public Integrity and the Associated Press. $425 million. They just entered the uh, rent moratorium, but they had $425 million that, did, that never reached the tenants nor the landlords. You have to ask, you know, how how efficient is this distribution system? 
How you know, is this distribution system? Is it accidental? You know, because we can contact trace down to where you're standing. We have satellites in space that can see boogers in your nose. But we can't get dollars to because I mean, if I owe a bill, you're gonna find my address. My phone let me not pay my bill. I mean, the second midnight comes and my bill isn't paid. Oh, my phone doesn't work. And so you got so you got to know the technology exists to uh, make sure the resources when we're talking about fiat gets to those that need it. If we're wanting to create uh, universal justice, in the words of the elder Nilly Fuller. But it's very strange how these programs and we're tying this together when it talks about these promises. And so uh, going back to what I was talking about, the H.R. 40. That was just a conversation where we'll, we'll start discussing reparations again. I mean, we know y'all been bringing it up for the last couple hundred years, but we'll we'll discuss studying, bringing it up again. Right. As the debt just continues to, to rise, like I said, fifty one trillion dollars. If this country was to give that, you know, anybody would sense and it's not to disparage anybody's intelligence. You got to know that the U.S. has not prioritized. Now, before we go help anybody else. Before we go get that opium out of Afghanistan, before we go try to colonize anywhere else, let us make sure we repair uh, those over here that we did wrong and exploit it. That is not a priority, family. I mean, you uh, and, and a nation can't survive off of butter biscuits. And so I, I'm going to give a handful of these Negroes a little bit of money to keep, you know, to keep the hope alive. Just keep hoping and dreaming and maybe one day and then, you know, each generation you die off waiting. Uh, I can't. I can't forget what the elder John Boyd was saying when he was talking about, you know, we can't afford another nine years kicking this can down the road to repair these farmers. Uh, like I said, uh, I, I would never, as long as I'm living and breathing, say, hey, you know what? I give up. Y'all don't owe us nothing. I would never say that. But it comes to a point like, you know, when we, we, you, there's only so much you can do with your energy. Either you can go this way or that way. So how much energy are we collectively as as, as a people going to put towards asking, waiting, and expecting this justice versus really taking some sort of codified approach. Uh, I know there's a lot of brothers and sisters right now around the uh, diaspora, specifically North America, having these conversations. Uh, you see them all day, you know, going through content, you know, on YouTube. I'm, I'm, I'm an addict of content. You know, the, the pillars, know the ledge, you know, black dot, shot to black dot. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of conscious content creators uh, putting out some good information, but you know, here in Central Kentucky, you know, we're surrounded. I think we're what uh, tw twenty. We represent maybe fifteen percent of the population, and so it, it's like you hear these conversations. I don't think nobody's really checking for us. And so my thing is practically, you know, what when when, when we're in these areas where we're surrounded, what can we do when you just don't have a large enough base of support? Uh, when I'm talking about support, it's not helping one individual pay bills. I'm talking about what can we do to build a larger base of people who's really going to put in work for the community. Uh, when we're talking about community, that can be very vague. And so this is why at B1Ag, we really want to talk about the black agricultural community, because if we can't eat, then nothing else that we talk about is going to exist. Herbs are cool. You know, shea butter is cool. You know, uh, aesthetics, all of that is cool. But when you know how codified are we around being able to provide basic produce? How formidable are our networks locally, wherever we're, uh, wherever we're located at across the diaspora, how formidable are our networks? If we spent as much time uh, studying, you know, different farmers, different producers uh, within our regions as we have looking online at our favorite content creators or looking at some of the challenges, looking at some of the distractions. And this is, a, you know, it's a rhetorical question. Who knows the answer? But family, we are coming to a time and point where we're, you know, we're not going to have much time to guess. You know, it's one of those things like you don't want the you don't want the hurricane to hit you and you didn't board your house up. Like it's too late once the winds start blowing and, and economically, socially, uh, spiritually, the winds are blowing family. And so as we still do have access to Internet, as we still do have uh, access to a little bit of capital, uh, I, I don't think we can. You know, it's just like FEMA. Uh, FEMA, that's the Federal Emergency Management Agency or whatever, that is equivalent to these reparations we asked for. Uh, this just came to me as I'm talking. And so FEMA, you know, hey, it sounds good if you look at the mission statement. It's to help in disasters, help aid, help people, help people in need. 
And so we think about Katrina all the way up to Ida. And so it's somehow for some reason as effective and efficient, you know, the greatest nation in the world and all these agencies we have, it somehow, it, it somehow comes late. Uh, you can equate this FEMA to this funding, to this assistance, to this help. And so uh, I've seen some stories coming out of the Gulf now when they're, they're talking, you know, because of Ida, a lot of people were displaced. And in some places, we're not here giving medical information, but I think you know where I'm going. Some places, well, I can't help you to get some Smurf berries. I got to get proof that you've had some Smurf berries, that you've had your dose of Smurf berries. What does this mean on a broader scale? What, I, I got a question for the family. What if what if it does come to a point where, okay, you know what, y'all been asking so much, just begging and pleading, and I, I just see how disparaged you are. I'll give you your reparations, but you got to let me experiment. You got to come, you got to follow me to the lab first. Then I'll think about thinking about giving you a reparative justice, but you got to eat some Smurf berries first. Well, what's in these Smurf berries? I don't know, but you know, I want to make sure you're safe when I when I give you these this, this reparative justice. E even though it's eating my budget up, even even though it's 16 times what my budget is, I want to make sure you get it. But get these Smurf berries first. It sounds conspiratorial. It sounds kooky. But uh, like I say, the conspiracy theorists are winning right now in 2021. Everything that we've said is impossible, unrealistic. We're seeing all of these things roll out. And I'm talking week by week, week by week. Uh, right now, white Amer what we call white people are in distress, right? And what do they say in the farming community? When the white farmer catches cold, black farmers catch pneumonia. This same principle applies when we just talk about the population as a whole. No help is coming. What are we where, what are we ready to do? Are you willing to wipe your own ass? That simple. Wet wipes. I won't hold the family too long today, but uh, you know, as we propose here at B1 Ag, so we we have healthyblackfood.com that on the uh, black business school. Uh, that was specifically created. Uh, we put a program together talking about the basics from soil amendments to different type of gardening structures, just different type of ecological factors that go into growing your own food. Uh, we're coming into a place where, you know, a lot of kids are getting sick. Uh, different states are going back and forth, you know, as far as NTI, different ways to learn. We believe 100 percent step that healthy black food is a great resource. Uh, if you don't go to Healthy Black Food, uh, we would definitely encourage that you do. There are other sources. Uh, there's Lead Farmer 73. You can find him on uh, YouTube. He's a great resource as far as prepping uh, different gardening. Uh, gardening with Goo. He's also on uh, YouTube. Ron Finley, the gangster gardener. He's out of the West Coast. Uh, when we think about groups on Facebook, you know, so a lot of us, we spend time, you know, scrolling through, looking at people's disasters. Sometimes we feel better when we see people, you know, in crisis. But, you know, let's look at some of the people to win. so some of the groups on Facebook, uh, their son joined Hemp Group. Uh, this is out of Kentucky. This is with my brother, Lamar Wilson. Uh, Bread and Butter Farms. Uh, Black Outdoorsman, LLC. Uh, Black Owned Farms. And I repeat, these are groups on Facebook. Uh, Federation of Southern Cooperatives. And so especially uh, people in the South looking for uh, networks of black farmers, the Federation of Southern Cooperatives is a great resource. Uh, I know they can definitely use some help and support. Uh, black Ag Entrepreneurs of America, uh, National Black Food and Justice Alliance, Black Farmers Nationwide, Black Farmers and Agriculturalist Association, Detroit Black Community Food Security Network, uh, and, you know, if you didn't get these names, just replay because we could use some likes, shares and subscribes on the B1 Ag channel. On Instagram, you have people like Black Farmers Network, Black Farmers and Homesteads, National Black Farmers Association. And those are a few on Instagram. Uh, the bro got up uh, betterbuggy.com. So this is a this is a group out of Atlanta. They can ship to you wherever you're at. You know, these are organic farmers. Uh, they're, you know, they specifically uh, source from black farmers. Uh, you think about uh, Black Soil KY. And so this is the company I co-founded here in uh, Kentucky. 
And so our goal is to, uh, you know, create a market for black farmers. And so you can check us out at blacksoilky.com. Uh, Homestead Heart. And so this is a family on YouTube. Uh, they give great information as far as canning, uh, just different prep. Uh, Pastor Dow, you know, uh, irregardless of how you feel about uh, people's ideologies or religion, you know, Pastor Dow is a great resource as far as, you know, showing through his work what a homestead looks like. But saying that to say, family, we're at a point in time now, uh, this isn't the time to fall into characters. This isn't the time to start, you know, picking that character over another. This is the time to glean information. We're going into what people are calling the, the dark winter the cold winter. Uh, those that are promising all of this help, they're talking about building back better. And if I know I got a world of 7.6 billion people, uh, I'm the, I'm called the president of a corporation that has what, three point, uh, 390 million people in what we call North America, and 44 million of them people is upset. You know, do you build back better by giving them what I own? And that's gonna break my corporation or am I gonna come up with all of these little methodic ways of decreasing the amount that's asking for it? Am I gonna incentivize a handful of them just to not ask for anything at all? See, a lot of these are different dynamics we got going on, family. So right now it's, uh, it's crucial that we really look at what resources are available. What are the things that we can do? Because no help is coming. Are you gonna wipe your own ass? We got to do for self, do for self. One of the things that made the Black Panthers formidable was the fact that they fed their own people. They started the school lunch program. The, the government was like, wow, that's a great idea. We need to do that. Because you have to, because everything starts with food, everything. So when we're doing for self, one of the first places we need to look at is securing our own food, having food security. I can tell you through my own personal experience, money comes and goes, but it's different from being broke than being hungry and broke. It's a big difference. You know, they can cut off the money supply anytime. It's fiat currency. I got my degree in economics from the University of Kentucky. They can say today, make an announcement and say, uh, this money you have in your pocket, this thing, uh, it's no longer, it's worthless now. You have to come get this new currency. And it's that easy. So well, you got to protest? No, I don't want a new currency. So go to the store and buy something with your protest. Jordan shrug. Michael Jordan shoulder shrug. Hey, but at the end of the day, the more that you can do for yourself, the better for yourself, your family, your community. Are you going to wipe your own ass? I hate to put it like that, but I mean, that's just being straight to the point. And I hope you can understand the seriousness of the days and times that we're living in. You know, when you're a baby, you know, your parents, they come and, you know, make sure that you're, you know, not soiled. You haven't soiled yourself or, you know, in the smell, you know, uh, make sure that you don't have all this disgusting things on your body. But as you get older, you know, you have to go to the restroom yourself. Do you realize since 2000, from 2013 to 2018, 300 billion in foreign aid has been spent by the US government. The US American taxpayer has been generous to foreign countries. 300 billion has flowed to aid countries outside of the US. And we have 7.5 million citizens who've gotten cut off of assistance uh, from a, a pandemic, a sickness that, you know, they had no involvement in. Uh, depending on what your news source is, the U.S. paid for this sickness, uh, the NIH, but that's a whole nother conversation. 
But saying that to say, when you put all of these different things in perspective of what's going on, like I said, the codified thing is what can we do outside of waiting, outside of asking what is within our what is within our capability? And there is nothing in the world. I promise you, family, there's nothing stopping you from planting a seed. There's nothing from teaching uh, yourself, your offspring, how to produce food. Gardening is cute, right? You know, cute flowers. But the ability to produce food, not only is it something useful uh, just as a skill set, but it's also going to become a survival uh, necessity. Because those that don't produce food, guess what happens? In a situation where you can't just go to the store, no matter how much money you have, you'll be dependent on those who do produce food. Uh, heaven forbid you're a part of a group that didn't think about or you don't have a network of people to know how to produce food because now you're completely enslaved by whoever's able to feed you. And and see, the ground doesn't see color. <laughs> you know, your, your, your government does, but the ground doesn't. There's nothing stopping us from reconnecting with the land. There's nothing stopping us from reconnecting with that part of us that made this country uh, wealthy in the first place. And that's agriculture, that learn how to grow. Uh, I, can, I can grow next to, next to a brother or sister and you don't need to know what my ideology is. I, I believe in the most high. I ain't using English words to say, you know, <laughs> but I, I ain't gonna get into that. But I know the most, I'll say the most high put whatever this is, I am here. This that I am produces energy. It produces light. There's things that it can do. I was given arms. I was given appendages on my body to do something, a voice to do something. Uh, regardless of what that something is, guess what it has to have to do whatever the function that it was created to do. It has to eat. And so look at all of these middlemen, these contentious middlemen topics that we can cut out of the way when we just focus on the how are we going to eat. Not just how we're going to eat, how are we going to, and not just how we're going to grow, how are we going to distribute it to those that need it? Because everybody within this system doesn't have to be a producer. Uh, that's why we named some of those names, and I'll name them again before we get off here. Sometimes it's just supporting those who are already doing it. We get a lot of questions about people in, in large cities. Man, I'm in the city, uh, you know, how, how can I grow? So there is urban gardening. You can grow a little bit, say if you're in an apartment or a, a you know, a, a condensed area, you, you can grow a little bit, but in those larger cities, you typically have, like I know up in New York, they make a whole lot more money uh, per individual than say here in Kentucky where I'm at. And so these become your places to fund these farmers in the deep South or in the rural areas to where they're not sitting waiting nine years, 10 years, 50 years for some sort of government assistance that'll never come. This becomes the base that's able to pay for the tractors pay for the equipment for these farmers to be able to utilize their land and create more. This pays for the refrigerated trucks for the brothers who, who are losing jobs because they don't want to eat Smurf berries. There's nobody stopping us from creating a food system, family. I, I, I can't say that I've, I've been all through the system, but I, I've seen enough of it. I've interned at the state capitol. Uh, I've gone to so many conferences and, and been a part of so many boards, advisory councils and all of this. And what I know is, man, we're never a priority. But that's a gift and a curse. We're not, we're, us being a, not a priority means they're not worried about us. And I would say I'm going to assume a lot of them feel like, oh, they're just going to self-destruct anyway. So let's focus on this new group that we're bringing in. And so while we have this time as we're in our finest hour, as I truly believe we are. Let us build something that is true, that is real. A food system is true. A food system is real. It is not a left or right paradigm. It's not a good or bad paradigm. It's not a conscious, unconscious paradigm. Whatever you feel, you have to feel yourself to feel that way. Can we codify? Here be one ag. we wanna reach 250,000 third through fifth graders. I'll break it down. Third through fifth graders, we want to reach 250000 This equates to $40 a kit. What do these kits entail? These kits entail uh, uh, growing growing kits uh, with peat moss pods. These kits in, uh, include coupons for uh, potting soil. These kits include at least two or three different packets of different varieties of seeds. These kits include links to vi uh, educational videos. These kits include activity booklets. 
forty dollars, and there's a little bit more in these kits. But the goal is we want to reach two hundred fifty thousand melanated students. We want their first experience when it comes to growing food to come from from melanated minds who care. Uh, it has to be melanated people to pay for it. There, there's all sorts of organizations that that would love, you know, like you were saying, the government saw what the Black Panthers had going on. Oh, this is great. We will take this gladly. To make the magic work, it has to be caring melanated minds to support it. Uh, and, and whether you do it through B1 Ag or whether you do it locally, you're looking at about a $40 kit to distribute it to the kids, third through fifth graders. Their minds are still impressionable. They haven't already been, they haven't already bought in this idea that, 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 that farming is somehow tied to slavery. We have to reach people where they are. You know, we exhaust a lot of energy trying to conduce, uh, convince us adults who are stuck in our ways. And so can we positively, because I tell you, these record labels are sending some of these artists out here, you know, you know, pregnant men running around. They, they have a plan. So what is our plan? I want to impregnate the minds of our children with their ability to grow, their great history, their legacy of coming from ancestors that grew created the first markets, created the first civilizations. We have opportunity to do it and no help is coming. So let's get to growing everybody. Like, share, subscribe. Let's make this conversation, this B1 Ag conversation, a bigger conversation as well as platform. Let's make sure that we stay informed. We need our people to understand what is going on with our food system. It's going through drastic changes and a lot of very big challenges at this moment. I mean, they if we don't pay attention, they will feed us anything. They literally will feed you anything. So if we want to make sure that we have a great seat at the table, we make sure that we are... Uh, we are at the Grand Harvest. You know, we have a place at the Grand Harvest. Uh, we need to make sure that we're growing our own food. We need to make sure that we know what's in our food. We need to make sure that what we're eating is really food. So. Again, family, you know, for those that's asking, okay, I, I don't know where to find black farmers. On social media, on Facebook, uh, Sun Joint Hemp out of KY. Bread and Butter Farms, Black Outdoorsman LLC, Black Owned Farms, Federation of Southern Cooperatives, Black Ag Entrepreneurs of America, National Black Food and Justice Alliance, Black Farmers Nationwide, and that's a group I'm a part of, I mean, hundreds of farmers, Black Farmers and Agriculturalist Association, Detroit Black Community Food Security Network, that's on Facebook. On Instagram, there's the Black Farmers Network, Black Farmers and Homesteads, National Black Farmers Association. If you're wanting to also look for a, a broader a national database of farmers, so shopblack.us, uh, blackfarmershub.com. You can also go to betterbuggy.com. On YouTube, and like I said, this this is just a few. These are some of the ones that you know we 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 tap into. So Homestead Heart, Lead Farmer, Gardening with Goo. Like I said, I know in uh, Ron Finley out in the East Coast, and so I know I'm leaving a lot of brothers and sisters out there. There's a lot of good work going on around the country, and unfortunately, your media isn't going to show you uh, a lot of this good work that people are putting in. But we hope you know you rewind. You know, write down, uh, write down some of these resources and just check out some of the content. You know, here at B1 Ag Daily Bread Podcast, we like to bring these uh, conversations up, put it in context. Uh, we do a class the first Thursday of every month uh, through our uh, healthyblackfood.com. Once again, this is a class specifically designed uh, for the family. It's palatable to the youth. They understand that we do it in such a fun way where, you know, it's not beating you over the head. It's just really giving you, you know, saving you a couple thousand dollars of having to go get a degree. Right. Because uh, we got to get to work, family. We got to get to work. Uh, there's a lot of work being done. And so my thing is, uh, this is very disparaging that we have no help coming. But I tend to believe we don't need help. 
We don't need help. We, we, we're all that we have and we're all that we need. But, you know, it, it takes us figuring out what is the code. You know, our food security is one piece of it, right? You know, there's so many other issues, so many other things that divide us. But I guarantee you, you're looking at hundreds of thousands of jobs across the country, across the diaspora, just maximizing a food security system, a food security code. And from those jobs, the same way civilization grew, as above, so below. Once that seed of that black ingenuity that we all come from anyway gets reverted back to creating versus destroying, this is how we create the jobs of the future. This is how we innovate using technology to uh, make the process of getting the seed from, from the seed to table more efficient, more effective. And we're in a place in time where we can sell these patents, we can sell these ideas. But it takes us caring. It takes us prioritizing that over what divides us. No help is coming. What are we willing to do? I'd like to thank you all for um, checking in with us again. No help is coming. Are you willing to wipe your own? Are you willing to take care of your own? Are you willing to grow your own? Farmer Brown. And if you want to hit us up, please hit us up at b1aghiphop at gmail.com. b1aghiphop at gmail.com. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, 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 like. There's 10 people watching right now. I need 10 likes. It's free. That's free. Like, 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 share, 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 and subscribe to B1 Ag Hip Hop at on YouTube, Daily Bread, B1 Ag, Daily Bread Podcast. From Brown. If the people really want to know something, what do they need to do? Shh, don't panic. If you really want to know something, you really, really, really want to know something. Really want to know something. Birdman hand rule. Shake them haters off, family, and let's learn how to grow something. Y'all enjoy your day. Be prosperous. Be productive. Hey, grow something. We Peace out. We'll see you again.